Hello there everyone, we are back with Kitty Play Song and Ramba and this is episode 18 and now we are officially starting the investigation. And we've got, oh, two bodies here to take a look at. So let's first start with Taka. Taka, he'll never move again. According to the Monokuma file, Taka died from a blow to the head. We found Justice Hammer 4 near his body in the equipment room. Is that what was used to kill him? And there's a tarp laid out under his body. Did the killer use this to move Taka's body? That way, there wouldn't be any blood left behind while the body was moved. And there's a blood stain on it. whoop de doo Well, I mean, duh. Okay, so... Next, we'll look at Hifumi's body. Hifumi's big cold... <laughs> wow, Makoto! I, I'm just kidding. Hifumi's big cold body is laying on the floor. <laughs> just when I thought he couldn't get more descriptive, his really big body. I mean, how on earth was the killer able to move someone so big? I don't know. From the nurse's office where he was discovered to hear the repository. All the way from the first floor to the third and all without anyone noticing it. How the How the hell? It's no good. I just don't get it. I can think about it later. For now, I have to finish investigating Hifumi himself. If I remember correctly, Hifumi's fatal injury was also a blow to the head. Probably from Justice Hammer 3, which is laying on the floor in the nurse's office. Huh? Wait. Something's off about his body. I know exactly what it is, too, because it's plain as day. And if it's not, I apologize, but it'll be revealed later. Why am I getting this feeling? Something's different. Something about Hifumi's body in the nurse's office versus his body right now. Yeah, see? His glasses. Oh, apparently he mentions it right here and there, duh. That's it, his glasses! When his body was in the nurse's office, his glasses were covered in blood. But now, they're completely clean. Does that mean someone wiped his glasses off? But who would do that, and why? Yep. Okay, so now we can talk about the missing hammers. There are hammers of all different sizes hanging on the wall, although some are more like mallets. Mallets? Could the justice hammers have been designed using th these as a model? Either way, all the hammers here have obviously seen a lot of use. They're all covered in debris and chalky stone powder. Wait. For some reason, this one hammer isn't dirty at all, and it's wet. Did someone wash it recently? Dun dun dun. Gee, I wonder... Okay, I guess we should maybe talk to these people here? I mean, we should talk to them. Derp, sorry, my brain is off. There are many as- <clears throat> Sorry. I need to remember to do the voices. I apologize! There are many aspects to the incident this time. Too many, to be honest. Oh yeah, we can come to Sakura for summaries and stuff, because this case has a lot that happened. So, she's here to, like, give us the rundown if we forget something. Which is why I love her. Considering that, it may be good to look back on everything that's happened. So then. Would you like my help? I mean, I've been over this chapter a few times. So, we're good. Oh, yeah! This was, um... Wasn't this elsewhere? Yeah, it was in the repo not the repository. The physics lab, duh. It's a dolly. It doesn't have a handle. I saw this in the art room before. I guess it's used to move statues around. It's kind of awkward, but if you bend down, it's not too hard to use. Huh? But wait. Wasn't this in the equipment room when we found Taka's body? Da da And look at the wheel. There's a blood stain on it. So there's blood on the wheel of the dolly that was moved from the equipment room to the repository. What's the explanation for that? And if you remember, in the equipment room you can see those tracks from the dolly. I mean, that's not a spoiler because it was plain as day, so. Um, what's Tina got to say about all this? So, um... Hey, um, Makoto, I've been thinking about something. It's about the repository. 
Huh? What is it? Hmm. After Hifumi and Taka's bodies disappeared, we split up to look around, right? I was really scared, so me and Sakura stuck together. But... And we came right to the repository, too, you know, look around. But when we got here, the repository was locked. We couldn't get inside. It was locked? Hmm. And we came here as soon as the search started, so there was no way someone could have beat us here. Hmm. So if that's true, then who locked it? And why is it unlocked now? I wonder the same thing. The door was locked when the search for the bodies began, but now it's wide open. There might be some secret lurking in there, but I'll probably have to leave this area to figure it out. Okay, I know I saw Mr... Uh, well, you all know what I call him by now, so yeah. Maybe I should call him Mr. T for short, and I don't mean T as in Togami either. Okay. <laughs> Byakuya, do you think Hiro really did it? Hmm. I don't see how anyone could think otherwise. When the attacks and murders and disappearances all happened, every one of us had an alibi. And the last thing Hifumi said when he died. Yeah, he said Hiro's name. So in other words... Then there is no room to suspect anyone else. Okay, but if he did do it, why would he hide his identity with that weird costume? Hmm. Maybe he thought that no matter what happened, he'd be safe as long as his face was covered. Because he's the fool of the century, you see. I mean, he kind of is, but he would never do something like that. Because I love him, and I trust him, and reasons, whatever. Okay. I mean, he is kind of dumb. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even I admit that he is kind of dumb, but it's okay. I mean, he is kind of dumb. But do you really think that's enough to explain it? No. I don't think so. I feel like there's a clue hiding in there somewhere. What? And is that it? That's all that bothers you about the case? Well, no, there are a few other things. Like, why did the killer try to hide the bodies? <laughs> they probably figured that if we couldn't find the bodies, we couldn't complete our investigation. But if that's the case, we found the bodies pretty easily, didn't we? <laughs> Again, it comes back to the fact that the culprit was a moron. Is that really all there is to it? The other thing that bothers me is, why did they bother killing two people? What? What? Because all the rule says is if you can kill someone and get away with it, you graduate, right? Exactly. Why, why is Togami questioning this? Like, shouldn't he know? So if you're the killer, your number one priority is not getting caught. But killing two people means more clues, more chances you'll get found out. Exactly. I see. Hold on. Perhaps. I see. So that's what that means. I is everything okay? Oops. He's deep in thought. Okay. Don't talk to me as if we're friends. Huh? What's with the attitude? <laughs> but you have my appreciation. Goodbye. Thanks to you, I might have some fun with this after all. His mysterious words hung in the air as he left the repository. He talked as if he'd figured something out. But if he did, would it have killed him to tell me what it was? Oh, okay. There's only one way in and out of this room. Through the door that Hina said was locked before. There's definitely a lock on the door, but it can only be locked from inside the repository. I don't see any way to lock it from the art room. Or from in the art room. Hmm. The door can only be locked from inside the repository, which makes me wonder. Hina and Sakura confirmed that the door was locked after we started looking for the missing bodies. And the door is designed so that it can only be locked from inside the repository. Yes, we get it, Makoto. In other words, when Hina checked it, someone, someone had already gone in the repository and locked the door. When they were done, they unlocked it and left, which is why it's unlocked now. Wait, wouldn't have Hina and Sakura seen the person leave, though? I don't know. I've always wondered that. But Hina claims that there's no way someone could have beaten them to the, to the repository. So that certain someone... Hmm, there's got to be a clue around here somewhere. Maybe I should check somewhere else. There are some places I already know about. First the nurse's office, where Ifumi was found, then the equipment room, where Taka was found. Yep. Okay, 
so first I'll check the nurses. Oh wait, is the the physics lab's on this floor too? So I might as well check that first since it's closer. Duh. Okay, so let's go there and then the nurse's office. Okay, and yeah, you can see that- Oh! Somebody woke up! Oh wait, she woke up a while ago, didn't she? Duh, I'm, I'm stupid, okay? I was sleeping right here when the killer carried the body away! <laughs> I'm super pissed I missed- uh, I'm super pissed I missed such an ultimately rare event! I'm so sorry, genocide. There's some kind of tire mark going through the pool of blood in the middle of the room. That reminds me about the doll in the repository. Yep, see, there you go. There was blood on its tire. Could that blood have come from... Well, where else could it have come from? Here? Which could mean Taka's body was moved from the equipment room to the repository using the dolly. Both rooms are on the third floor, so that should definitely have been possible. Yep. But even if the dolly was used to move Taka's body, what about Hifumi? Hifumi's body was in the nurse's office on the first floor. Even with a dolly, there's no way to get it up to the third floor. That's still a total mystery. Well, if you think outside the box... That's all I'm gonna say. Justice Hammer 4, the weapon that was used to kill Taka. The body was moved, but the murder weapon was just left there. Here. Something. Okay. Oh, and the missing tarp. Huh? This tarp. I feel like I've seen it somewhere before, and just recently, too. Yep. So is that it in here? Yeah, okay. <sighs> now the nurse's office. I'll probably just teleport, too, because it's on the first floor. So... Okay, it's right here. Oh, look, it's so wet. Justice Hammer 3, the one that was used to kill Afumi. Someone moved the body, but left the weapon behind. What are you investigating, Celeste? <laughs> I am not investigating anything, precisely speaking. I am simply going around, seeing if Hiro might be hiding somewhere. Hmm. What about you? Oh, you know, I'm just checking this and that. The main thing on my mind is how someone could have moved Hifumi's body. Let's see. How Hifumi was moved, eh? When it disappeared, you were supposed to be in the nurse's office, right? Yes. Indeed. Correct. Correct. Hina was not feeling well, so I stayed behind to look after her. But she seemed to be getting worse, so I took her to the bathroom. And when you got back, the body was gone? Hmm. We could not have been gone for more than a minute or two, though. Yeah, Hina said the same thing. So then, the killer was able to get in and move Hifumi's body in that short amount of time? Indeed. It would seem so. To carry off someone as big as Hifumi in only a couple of minutes is... I can't think of it as anything less than impossible. I mean, unless you've got like Sakura's build, then you couldn't do it. I don't know if even Sakura could do it, cause like, holy crap. I mean, technically speaking. A refrigerator. I wonder if there's anything to drink inside. After everything I've been through, I'm totally parched. Maybe just a quick peek. There's a bunch of blood packets in here for blood transfusions, I guess. Makoto, are you gonna become a vampire? <laughs> it doesn't help me though, I'm not a vampire. Celeste might be though, she looks kinda she looks kinda like one, you know, she's pretty pale and she's got red eyes. I'm sure they're contacts, but whatever. Gasp! Celeste wears contacts? Cat, that's a spoiler! No, it's not. Okay, so I guess we're done here? Oh. There is? Okay, oh, the trash can. Durr. 
It's just a normal trash can. Huh? Wait, there's something inside. Oh, pretty pudgy princess. It's too small to be a handkerchief. It's a glasses cleaning cloth. And it's got it's got some kind of cartoon character on it. Ugh, but it's also covered in blood. Oh. Ah, did you find something? Yeah, there was a cleaning cloth in the trash can. Huh? A cleaning cloth. And it's all bloody. Whoever this belonged to must have used it to wipe up some blood. But who would need to do something like that? <sighs> I haven't seen the slight oh, I haven't the slightest idea. Yeah, me either, but I think it might be important. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's it. Yeah, okay, that was the last thing. Hooray! <clears throat> so this is where you were. I've been looking for you. Of course you have, Togami. You're in love with me, aren't you? You have? I wanted to thank you for what you did. Not that you meant to, but you ended up making this little game of ours very interesting indeed. Uh... You should go to Hero's room. Oh, and let me give you this. Meet in the dining hall. This is the note Hero wrote to get us all to meet up, right? You remember well. Well, the penmanship was pretty remarkable, so it left an impression. It's all clear now. Anyway, this makes it clear, right? This is a trap. What is? <laughs> <laughs> Things grow ever more exciting. Uh, what are you talking about? I've already repaid my debt. I don't owe you any more explanation. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay, time to go to Hero's room. So he said to go to Hero's room, but what's waiting for me there? Hero! <laughs> Sorry, I had to. Okay, so. I almost ran, like, right into the sign. Oh, whatever. Okay. And it should be... No. No. So I keep forgetting. Okay, there's my room. My hotel. And there's the turd's room. He'd be like, Makoto, I said hero's room, not my room. Okay. Uh, is it all the way at that? Wait, did I just pass it? Yes, I did. Okay. The door is unlocked? I guess I can go inside. Bianca did say to go look. It might not be a great idea, but I'm going to take the plunge. Oh, he better not have photos of me. I'm just kidding. Ew, look at all the fortune telling stuff. This is Hero's room. There's all kinds of weird stuff in here. Where do you even get it all from? It's all oop arts. <laughs> More importantly, he still hasn't turned up, which means he can't really complain if I don't get his permission to search his room, right? I hope not. Okay. I think there's something in the cardboard box. It's blueprints for something, and... Some things made out of... It looks like cardboard, plastic, and plaster? Is this Robo-Justice? And it's in Hero's room. But wait. These blueprints. Something about them bothers me. Yeah, the handwriting is way off. That's not his handwriting. First and foremost. Obviously, because you saw that note he wrote that was, like, amazingly written. So, it's obvious. Hmm. Have the arms been like this? I don't know why I'm reading it like that, but whatever. Okay. Oh, look at the pretty stuff. The table and everything. Sorry, I'm a dork. I soundlessly checked the bathroom. There's nothing in here. It's pretty grungy, though. How does a bathroom even get this dirty? Wow, hero, I can't. Oh, look, his bed. It's a normal bed, pretty much just like the one in my room. Yeah, I'm sure you'd love to sleep on it, Makoto. I should not be making these jokes. Oh my god. Okay, is this all... Okay, wait. 
No, okay. So that's it then for Hero's Room. Makoto! Big news! Big news! W what's wrong? We found Kyoko! What? I is she okay? Where is she? Wait, I wasn't done. There's more big news. Robo Justice showed up too. Robo Justice? Hmm. It's Hero wearing the costume. Okay. Anyway, as soon as you can, head to the pool on the second floor. To think Hero and Kyoko would turn up at the same time. Anyway, I have to head to the pool. I ran off to the second floor as fast as I could. Oh, look, it's Robo Justice. And Kyoko. Kyoko and. I mean. Phew, man, I've had the worst day. Hero? I missed you, Hero! <coughs> um, Hero? Haha! <laughs> yeah, duh, who else would I be? Uh, that's a good question. Huh, what? Why do I look like this? What? Did someone come along and remodel me while I was sleeping? Was it the Illuminati? Yeah, it was. Right. I found Hero. He was jammed into the pool room locker. The poor thing. It looked like he was fast asleep, so I kicked him and woke him up. Don't be mean. <laughs> I still can't believe you kicked me. You could have been a little more gentle about it, like, I don't know, cry! <laughs> That's Makoto's job, Hero! Like, I don't know, caress my face or something! Oh wait, you're not Makoto. What? That's creepy. Anyway, Kyoko, where would- where have you been all this time? You just disappeared all of a sudden, without a trace. Wow. There was something I had to check up on. What do you mean? Never mind. I can't never mind. Nothing. Never mind. Hey. More importantly, she says that, but does she have any idea? Does she know people think she might be spying for the mastermind? First of all, Hero, you need to explain to us why you're dressed like that. I mean... Oh, uh, well, I mean, I have no idea. One second I was asleep, don't even know how that happened. Then I woke up and then I was here. Hmm. I don't care. Do something about that costume. It pains me just to look at you. Huh? Well, uh, I don't know what- Can't let him finish. I don't know what's up with this thing, but I can't actually get it off. A little help. Why would you make something that you can't take off by yourself? You got it all wrong. I didn't make the stupid friggin' thing, god. Sloss, you're so mean, ugh. It would There's a clasp on the back that's keeping you from getting it off. It looks pretty sturdy. I don't think you can get it off on your own. <laughs> we don't really have a choice. Let's help him. It took everyone's help, but slowly we were able to get Hero out of the suit. It took a few minutes, but eventually we got all the pieces off. <laughs> <laughs> Free at last! <clears throat> Isn't it kind of weird how perfectly the suit fits Hero? So then... More like to the point. Nobody but Hero would be able to wear that costume. Uh, um... Wait, what? Uh, Hold on a sec! Honestly... Don't bother trying to act innocent. The blueprints were in your room as well. Is that okay? In other words, it is obvious to everyone that you made this costume. <laughs> That's true. I saw the blueprints myself. Yeah, me too. Could it be? Then it's obvious. The one who put this costume on and went around attacking everyone... That's terrible. ...was Hero! <sighs> Shall we tie him up and gag him? Celeste? No. You stop. Just the worst. Good idea! We, won't, we wouldn't want him killing anyone else. Hina, there's a two-person rule, remember? E not even Hero's that stupid. Come on. <laughs> To tie me up? N -n -n no, unless it's cough. I mean, never mind. <laughs> Hold on, guys. I think that's going a little far. That's right. He may be a suspect, but he deserves fair treatment. Thanks, Kyoko. At least I can believe mm. in someone here. Yeah, I mean, uh, um... attacking blueprints. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. What the heck? 
You can't talk your way out of this. It's been decided. You killed them. <laughs> Poor hero. What killed who? I have no idea what you're talking about. There must be a fake hero running around. What are you saying? You're the only one who can wear this costume. So who else could possibly be the costumed attacker? What the heck? How do you know I'm the only one? Maybe you should try it on for yourself before you convict me. Okay. Fine, if you're gonna be a jerk about it, I will. Without missing a bit, Hina started pulling on the Robo Justice costume. Putting on the Robo Justice costume. Did I say pulling on? Whatever. I don't care. Huh. See, look. See how loose it is? I mean, come on. I'm blind as a bat in here. Can't see my feet at all. I'm surprised you got anywhere in this thing. I'm telling you, it wasn't me! And not to mention, you totally can't bend at the waist. Seems like a pretty obvious oversight. That's not a very nice thing to say. Hmm? Uh, I, I mean, it's not like I made it. I just got caught up in the moment. Well, either way. Now we know for sure, right? I mean, it seems pretty clear that nobody but Hero could have fit into this dumb costume. In a huff, Hina took the suit back off again. <sighs> well, now you're all out of excuses. Uh, um... N no see? It's cause you're a girl! If it was another guy, then... <laughs> Makoto, go ahead. Uh, okay. But he's pretty short. Like, can't they get to, uh, like a taller dude to put it on? Hey, Togami, you wanna wear this? I'm a bit short. <laughs> Against my will, I picked up the pieces off the floor and tried putting them on. It's no good. The arms are too long. There's no way I can wear this. I'm too puny. Just a second. See, I told you it was impossible. <laughs> you are absolutely right. It seems this costume was made to fit Hero's body exactly. But... Th then there's another costume! They must have one that looks the same, but... but fits them! Honestly... If you insist on this line of defense, then show us some evidence. What the heck? Evidence? <laughs> you claim there is another suit, yes. Then you must find it and show it to us. <laughs> what the heck? Just the worst! Who cares? He was the only one without an alibi during this whole thing anyway. That's terrible! Which is how we know it was him! <laughs> I mean, is that really true? I have no idea what's been happening. Could someone, like, tell me? <laughs> Poor baby. Uh, so, like, do I tell him? What the heck? Uh, if you don't tell me what's going on, how am I supposed to understand? I think I figured out that someone's been killed, right? Hey, Makoto, who was it? Well, two people were killed. Taka and Hifumi. <laughs> What? Two people? Just the worst. Why are you freaking out? You did it. Please. I did not. Huh? Wait, hold on. Those two are the ones that were killed. How about that? That's it. I know who did it. So then. You may as well tell us then. Hmm. Talking if you were fighting over Alter Ego, right? I'm at least 30% right. Which me? <laughs> okay, an AI cannot kill someone. Unless they were programmed to, but I don't think Chihiro would do that. Which means Alter Ego and or Chihiro must have done it. Correct. I see. That's unfortunate. Please. Huh? Unfortunate? What the heck? Stop trying to trick us. Just admit that you did it, okay? Uh, um... I'm telling you, you got it all wrong. Oh, so then. Oh, I know that. No. No. Uh, um... Oh, yeah, I almost forgot. Last night, someone slipped a weird note under my door. And here's what it said. I found a hole maybe we can use to escape. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the rec room at 1 a.m. <coughs> but the last thing I remember is going to the rec room. Then for some reason, I fell asleep. The real killer probably drugged me or something. Just the worst. Not a chance. So... No, hold on. He could be onto something. The nurse's office did have chemicals that could do that. Huh? What? Really? Yeah. I told you. Someone's trying to set me up. A secret passage. A chance to escape. Someone threw all that to trick me. Yeah. Even if that's true, you must be one dumb fish to bite every piece of bait that floats in front of you. Yeah. 
Well, after being trapped here so long, even if you know it's a lie, you still gotta check, right? Yeah! yeah! <laughs> what the heck? Yo! They preyed on me at my desire to get out of here! They deceived me! Ugh. I still don't buy it. Don't be mean! Well, you should buy it! Just a second! Okay, then show us that note! Hmm. With pleasure! I have it right here in my, uh, pocket! No way! Oh my god, hero! Looks like I lost it! Oops, my bad! <laughs> yeah, sure! Please. You gotta believe me! I wanted her to fly! <laughs> As I said before, if you want us to believe you, you must produce evidence. Can you show us the note? I have no particular issue with what you claim, but if you want us to believe you, give us a reason. Uh -huh. What the heck? For serious! Now then, shall we resume our investigation? There's no time to waste before the class trial begins. Why do we need to keep investigating? We already know who did it. What the heck? Why? Why did you kill them? Tell us, hero! Uh -huh. No! It's like I said! Just the worst! Was it really to get the money Monokuma offered us? Yeah, that must be it. You must be totally broke, and that's why... Crap, he does have a lot of debt, doesn't he? Please. Wait! That's a false accusation! Someone help me! What are you saying? Just be thankful we haven't bound and gagged you! Oh my god, Hina, stop that! <laughs> Enough. If you have time to yell and carry on, you have time to search for your evidence, right? Oh, uh, you're right! I need to look for the second suit in that note! They don't feel me now! I guess I'd better get back to guard duty. I was gonna ask Toko, er, Genocide Jack to switch with me. Hmm. But if she and Sokka got into a fight, we'd have a catastrophe on our hands. Well, bye. One by one, everyone peeled away. Makoto. Makoto, do you have a second? Huh? I want you to help me with the investigation. It would seem... It looks like I got a late start on this one, so I need to make up some ground. Sure, I don't mind helping, but can you promise me something? Later, when we have time, will you tell me why you disappeared? Why is that? No. Wow, okay. To reject me so simply. Anyway. Anyway, I need your help. You don't mind, do you? Uh, okay. Shall we go? Thanks. Now then, shall we? Hey. So, Makoto, first I like to examine the corpses. Examine the corpses? I can't believe I'm hearing that from a girl the same age as me. Correct. Dead bodies don't lie, you know. They tell the truth far more easily than the living. Hey. Wouldn't you agree? How am I supposed to answer? Anyway. We have to hurry before the class trial begins again. Yeah, you're right. Okay, then. Show me where the bodies are. They're in the repository. Then I guess we should head that way for now. Okay. So, we're gonna teleport. Because, yeah. Yeah, fine, I'll just start here. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Fumi and Taka. For a moment, Kyoko seemed to go rigid. But only for a moment. So then. Well then, let's get started. She crouched down next to Taka and without hesitation began poking and prodding the bodies. I knew it. The Monokuma foul was right. They were killed using similar weapons. Her movements were so smooth, she was so calm. Seeing how comfortable she was actually made me feel a little more comfortable. I see. Makoto, I found something. You did? Hey. You remember the wristwatch Taka always wore in his left hand? He did? <sighs> Are you so oblivious to the people around you? Do you dislike other people that much? 
Wow. N no, that's not it. Anyway, so you said he had a watch? So then. Take a look. It's broken. You can see the hands aren't moving, right? It most likely broke when he had his encounter with his assailant. And if you notice, the hands are frozen at just past 6 o'clock. So that would mean their watch was broken sometime just after 6? That's right. But last night, Taka's watch definitely wasn't broken. Hey, you! How long are you gonna keep us waiting? Taka's irritated voice pierced the air as he stared pointily at his watch. It's almost 10 o'clock, you know that bedtime for blah blah blah, yeah. In other words... So if it worked at 10 last night, it couldn't have been broken at 6 p.m. Meaning it must have happened at 6 this morning. However... And that's not all. Look at Taka's left hand. He appears to be gripping something. You're right, there's something white in there. Makoto. Can you try and pry it out? Me? Because... Rigor mortis has already set in. Boys are better suited to this kind of manual labor, right? Uh, okay. As much as I didn't want to, I grasped Taka's cold hand. The ice-cold hand was nearly enough to cause my heart to stop beating. After some effort, I was finally able to free the object from his tightly clenched fist. A piece of paper? Okay. Was that all he had in his hand? Yeah, that's it. Just a little scrap of paper. Doesn't seem like much of a clue, does it? Is that right? I wonder about that. Kyoko then turned to Hifumi's body. So then. Let's check Hifumi's body now. Perhaps he's left us a few clues of his own. The biggest problem I have right now is how the killer was able to move Hifumi's massive corpse from the nurse's office where he was discovered to here, the repository. All the way from the first floor to the third, and all without anyone noticing it. I just can't see how that's possible. Further, it seems that Ifumi died from a blow to the head. He was most likely killed using Justice Hammer 3, which he found we found in the nurse's office, but his glasses. When we found his body in the nurse nurse's office, his glasses were covered in blood. But now they're spotless. Does that mean someone wiped his glasses clean? But who would do that and why? Oh, I thought we were supposed to. Okay. So, did you find anything? Mm -hmm. I did. More than I expected, to be honest. Look at this. A wad of paper. That's right. Hifumi had it hidden on him. Hidden? Indeed. He'd stuffed it in his... He'd stuffed it in his pants, so I can only assume he'd hidden it, hidden it on purpose, you see? In his pants? Wait, so you... Why is that? It was just his pants. Not like his socks or something. Yeah, okay. I don't know what that means. Hey. Anyway, let's take a look at the paper. Go ahead, Makoto. Open it up. When I think of how it was stuffed down his pants, it's like, It better be important, Hifumi. I'll never forgive you for this. A note? I found a hole maybe we can use to escape. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the equipment room at 6 a.m. So... That sounds very familiar. That's it. It's the same thing Hiro said. Then he was telling us the truth. However... Although, it's not exactly the same, is it? Yeah, the times are different. Uh, um... Last night, someone slipped a weird note under my door. And here's what it said. I found a hole maybe we can use to escape. Monica, I can't find out. Don't tell anyone. Let's meet in the room at 1 a.m. The time is different. Hiro told us that his note said to meet at 1 a.m. But the note they wrote to Fumi asked him to meet at 6 a.m. Is that right? Hold on. Just because Fumi had the note doesn't mean it was meant for him. Huh? So... Part of it has been torn off, right? I think there's likely some meaning here. There's some meaning to part of it being ripped. Uh, could you maybe explain it a little more? Think carefully. Hey. Why would he have been clutching that scrap of paper so tightly? I have no idea. What if it wasn't just a scrap of paper when he was holding it? What if it was something more important? And how would some something important like that become a more, mere scrap of paper? That's what you need to answer. Hey. And while we're at it, I should tell you one other thing. The two victims this time definitely had their e-handbooks on them. So the handbooks have nothing to do with how the murders were carried out. Not that there was any reason to think they were connected to the killings in the first place. 
So you're saying I don't have to think about the handbooks this time, right? Is that right? If you didn't have to think about them at all, I wouldn't have gone out of my way to mention it. All I said was that they weren't used weren't used to help carry out the murders. There may come a, there, there may come a point, however, where a handbook may play a role. A handbook may play a role. I don't think I understand. <laughs> But if Kyoko thinks it's important, I better keep it in mind. Yay, it's trial time. Woohoo! We'll do a little bit of the trial in this one. In this episode. Are you excited? Are you pumped? It's time for the class trial to begin! Like the bright burst of fireworks. Like the flash of a soul clashing with life and death. And so, with no further ado, everyone, please meet at the usual spot. Yeah, yeah, you got it, Monokuma. Make your way to the red door on the first floor of the school. <laughs> See you soon. It would seem... It's unfortunate, but I suppose this is where investigation comes to an end. You'll have to figure out the rest for yourself and come to the proper conclusion. Yeah, you're right. Shall we go? Well, we'd better get going. Uh, okay. Everyone had heard Monokuma's proclamation, and they were gathered by the red door. And as soon as we were all there... Monokuma appears! Why is there two? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hello, hello, hello! He's multiplying? Uh, not, not multiplication! It just looks like that way because of an illusion! I'm moving so fast it only looks like I'm multiplying! <laughs> Can you guys tell which one is the real Monokuma? Can we just get on the elevator already? Boy, so proud. <laughs> You're not playing along, along the wrong. We are not here to play with you. Okay. Okay, fine. Hey, hey. Then, if, then if everyone's here and ready to go, please board the pain train or er, elevator. I'll see you guys down there. Let's go. Okay then, shall we? <laughs> please. <laughs> Poor hero, my god. I would not be mentally prepared either. H hold on, I'm not mentally prepared yet. What the heck? You'll never be mentally prepared. You can't run away anymore, hero. You're gonna pay for your sins. What the heck? Well, somebody sure is. That's all I'm gonna say. But I mean, everyone does each time, so... I told you already, I didn't do it for serious. Hmm. That reminds me, did you ever find the other costume, or the note? Oh, uh, well, no, but... <laughs> How unfortunate. <clears throat> How unfortunate. Then it would seem we have our culprit. <sighs> I'm so sorry, hero. Hey. This isn't the place to talk about it. Save your accusations for when we get to the courtroom. That's right. She has a good point. She's right. Let's get down there first. Then the story can really begin. Yeah, good idea. That's right. I have to. I have to do it. I can't let whoever killed Afumi and Taka get away with it. For everyone who's still alive. And for the two that lost their lives. The one who killed Afumi and Taka. The one who killed two of our friends. The killer is... Someone right here. Yep. Now let's go. I took one last deep breath and exhaled slowly. I began to walk toward the elevator. Once everyone was aboard, the doors closed on their own and the steel box began to move. The clunking of the elevator kept us company as we fell further and further down. Damn, look how many are like missing. Remember when it was like full? Now it's like not as many people. There was no going back. Until we settled all this, we couldn't go anywhere. I'm not sure how long it was before the elevator finally came to a stop. The elevator door slid open, opening up onto a cruel fate. 
<laughs> when I see all of you gathered together like this, I realize just how few of you there are left. Your school life is slowly reaching its climax. It's just the worst. Only because of you. Mm. Why? Why are you making us do such cruel things to each other? Wah -wah? What? Do you really hate me so much? But I'm so cute. Come on. Stop goofing around and begin the trial. Yeah. Don't rush me. Of course I'm going to start it. I would never be like, stay tuned for the action-packed class trial after this commercial break. Yeah. I'd never hold on out on you like that. Okay, let's begin. Get to your assigned seats. And so, the curtain opened once again. Deadly judgment, deadly session, blah, 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 blah. We get it. We, we know the drill. Deadly class trial. Yes, let's save. Okay. So. Okay, so I've got six more SP. Yeah. Decreases an argument to three statements or less. Yeah. Okay. We're good to go. Let's do it. Let's begin with a basic explanation of the class trial. So, your votes will if you can figure it Yeah, we get it. Every now then. To begin with, we already know who did it. Was that? <laughs> What's that? It was Hero. He does not have an alibi for when the murders took place, and we found it in that suit. Don't try and deny it. You killed them. I didn't. Someone knocked me out. I, I was asleep the whole time. I don't know anything about it. Shut your murdering mouth, murderer! Who are you calling a murderer? Yeah, exactly, genocide. I mean, dirt. I am sorry to say, Hero, but we do have evidence. Blueprint for the suit. Parts we assume were used to build it. And all of it was found in your room. You have to admit, the evidence is quite compelling. It points to you as having created the suit and wearing it while committing crime after crime. How many times do I have to tell you? I... I... I don't know, I don't know, I don't know! Is Hero really the killer, or... Before anything else, we have to make that clear. This has to be his handwriting, right? The blueprints, the suit parts, they are all proof enough that you are the culprit. <laughs> I, I, I don't know anything about that stuff! It's not true! It's a conspiracy! Hero, why? Why did you kill them? No! Just hold oh, on wait, a Oh wait, which one was I supposed to- Okay, no. I mean, looking at the blueprints, the handwriting is awfully messy. Everything we found in your room. I guess the blueprint one is the one I have the to defuse. Or whatever. Yeah. Yay, okay. No, that's wrong. No, it's wrong. F you, Celeste. Are we sure Hero really made those blueprints? What do you mean? Well, take a look at this. It's the note that Hero wrote, asking everyone to meet up after Alter Ego disappeared. The handwriting's obviously different, wouldn't you say? When you compare it to the blueprints... There's no way you could think the same person made both of them. Unless that person made it a point to disguise their handwriting. No, the differences are bigger than that, I think. Yeah, Sakura's got a point. Come on! I'm not smart enough to think of trying to change my handwriting anyway. So, Makoto... Are you saying you don't think Hiro's the culprit? And he's not the only one. I think Hiro's innocent as well. For once, I agree with the turd. 
Then who was in that Robo Justice suit? Is it like Hero said? Was there really someone running around in a second suit? The suspicious individual hidden within the suit. Go ahead, Makoto. Tell them who it was. And of course, he passes it on to me. So? Who was in the Robo Justice suit? The suspicious individual in question, the one that must have been in the suit, was obviously Hero. Other than Hero, I can't think of anyone else it could have been. Obviously, he was the one in that particular suit, and we never found any kind of second suit. Then there can be no doubt. Hero is the prime suspect. That doesn't make any sense. You just said Hero didn't do it. It makes perfect sense. Hero was the suspicious individual in the suit, but he's not the culprit. So what you're saying is... That's right. The culprit in this case has nothing to do with being in the robo-justice suit. What? Yep. Now that's a bold assumption. And what reason do you have to make such a statement? You do have a reason, yes? Of course. But before we get to that, there's something else we need to clarify first. So let's get that out of the way. Hey, stop trying to boss us around! All things have a proper order. So what is it? What needs to be clarified? We must clarify the method of transportation for Taka's lifeless body. It would seem that his corpse was moved using certain particular items. Makoto, can you tell us what they were? The things that were used to move Taka's body, they must have been... I got it! There's still one more thing. The things that are used to move Taka's body. The dolly and the tarp. I got it! They were... a dolly and a tarp, right? <laughs> I like who's like, Shh. What's with the attitude? So, let's see if I can explain. Taka's body disappeared from the equipment room. And then we rediscovered it in the repository. And when we found it for the second time, it was wrapped in a blue tarp, right? It was the same tarp that up until then was stored in the equipment room. So the killer must have seen it there and decided to use it when they moved Taka's body. That way, they wouldn't leave any bloodstains while they were moving it. Okay, that explains the tarp. And the dolly? Same thing. I'm sure the dolly was in the equipment room when we first found Taka's body there. But when the body disappeared, so did the dolly. Later, when Taka's body reappeared in the repository, so did the dolly. In other words, you think they used the dolly to move the body, am I right? But are you sure you are not mistaken? Huh? Are you absolutely positive the dolly was in the equipment room when we found Taka's body? Celeste, we are sure. Why are you questioning this? That dolly was made specifically for moving large objects between the repository and the art room. It would be very strange indeed to discover it had made its way to the equipment room. Is it not possible that it was in the repository all along, and you simply didn't realize it? She's raised an objection. How do you respond? There is no shame in being wrong. Nobody expects much from you anyway. We have all accepted the fact that you rarely understand what is going on around you. Celeste, I think you're the one who really understands what's going on around you. Wow, I've never had anyone sound so nice while being so mean. But maybe I can change your mind. If I can just explain to them why the dolly must have been moved from the equipment room to the, reposi to the repository. The element has been added. Okay. Let's talk about reloading. Starting with this next bullet time battle, we're going to add one more ingredient to the recipe. 
On the bottom of the screen, underneath the tempo marker, you'll see your ammo count. Up until now, there hasn't really been a limit on how you destroy your opponent's statements. But from now on, just locking and pressing the left mouse button won't be enough to handle them. Now it will cost you one bullet to destroy a single remark. Once you run out of bullets, you can't destroy any more statements, no matter how locked on you are. However, you can reload by pressing the tab key. Just like locking on, you'll have to press the tab key in time with the tempo marker. Basically, just remember that the tab key now has a function along with the RMB and LMB buttons. You'll automatically reload at the start of fever time and your ammo will not, dec will not decrease. Oh, but if your action difficulty is set to gentle, you won't have to reload at all. In which case, you can ignore everything I just said. Good luck and have fun! You had it wrong! I cannot agree! You are a fool! So pathetic! Lies will get you nowhere! Do your worst! I will do my worst! You miserable wretch! I cannot agree! You are a fool! Lies will get you nowhere! Do your worst! You miserable wretch! You had it wrong! I cannot agree! You are a fool! So pathetic! Lies will get you nowhere! Do your yeah. worst! Away with you! You miserable wretch! I cannot agree! You are a fool! Lies will get you nowhere! Do your worst! You miserable wretch! I cannot agree! This should prove it! If you're asking for proof that the dolly moved, I have it right here. When I found the dolly in the repository, one of the wheels had a blood stain on it. There was a pool of blood in the equipment room with a tire marking that matched the dolly wheel's tread. The killer probably rolled the dolly through the blood on accident as they wheeled the body out of the room. And as the blood dried on the tire, they moved the body into the repository. So there's my proof that the dolly was used to move Taka's body. Hey, I got you, Celeste. Jeez, does Celeste really hate me that much? Well, anyway, that was just something we had to get out of the way. Let's get back to the main subject. Yeah, the subject of how Robo Justice didn't do it. Because if it's not a killer robot, then... What kind of robot is it? I'm not sure that really matters. I'd be happy to explain why the occupant of the suit couldn't possibly be the killer. If you look back on how the body was transported, it will become immediately obvious. If I look at how the body was moved, it'll be clear why the person in the suit couldn't have done it. What does he mean by that? I mean, I think I know. I mean, I do know. Whatever. As we know, Taka was killed in the equipment room. And from there, the body was moved to the repository, correct? Yeah, the culprit wrapped the body in the tarp, then loaded it onto the dolly and wheeled it off, right? Now, keep in mind that the dolly doesn't have a handle. Well, yeah, but even without a handle, all you'd have to do is bend over. But you can't bend in the costume. You're absolutely right that you could push a dolly without a handle if you stoop down low. But if you were wearing that suit, do you think you could actually get into a position like that? What do you mean? Think back to what you said when we were all checking out the suit together, remember? I'm blind as a bat in here. Can't see my feet at all. I'm surprised you got anywhere in this thing. I'm telling you, it wasn't me. And not to mention, you totally can't bend at the waist. Seems like a pretty obvious oversight. When you're in that suit, 
Not only can you not see your feet, but you can't even bend at the waist. Am I right about that? Now that you mention it, yeah. It seems like it'd be awfully hard to push that dolly if you couldn't bend over. Well, what's to stop you from simply pushing the dolly with your feet? Yeah, when Hero can't even see his feet in that suit? Nice try, Celeste. Nice try. When you can't even see your feet? You really think someone could kick the dolly all that way? Yeah, it'd be totally impossible. Not that I can say for sure myself. <laughs> On top of that, if you were wearing such a rigid, cumbersome suit, it's very unlikely you would have the dexterity to go about wrapping the body in a part. Well, I mean, isn't that just a matter of taking off the suit when you're ready to move the body? Yeah, about that! There's absolutely no chance that the costume was taken off just to move the body because... I got it! I don't think taking off the suit was an option. If you remember... I don't know what's up with this thing, but I can't actually get it off. A little help. Why would you make something that you can't take off by yourself? I didn't make the stupid friggin' thing. There's a clasp on the back that's keeping you from getting it off. It looks pretty sturdy. I don't think you can I don't don't think you can get it off on your own. We don't really have a choice. Let's help him. That's true. It seems impossible to put the suit on or take it off without help. Then you really can't take it off by yourself? Hero wasn't just making it up. Of course I wasn't making it up. If he could have gotten it off by himself, I don't think he would have let us see him wearing it. Showing up in the suit was basically an invitation for everyone to suspect it. Yeah, that's right! So, it's really, really true that Bobo Justice couldn't have moved the dolly? To be clear, whoever did move the body, it couldn't have been Hero in the robot suit, correct? No, wait. Just a second, if you please. Have you forgotten about the picture that I took? You all got a good look at it, did you not? The image of Hifumi being dragged away by Robo Justice? If whoever was in that suit is not the culprit, how do you explain that? Besides, do you remember what the now deceased Hifumi said? How did you get hurt? That guy hit me. What guy? Robo Justice. Er, that's what I decided to call him just now. So long as those facts exist, the proper conclusion is beyond question. The individual inside the suit and the culprit are one and the same. It was Hero, without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah, that's gotta be right. Hold on a second. It's not right, come on! It's still far too early to reach that conclusion. Besides, there's no hurry to decide who did it. Before we rush to a verdict, shouldn't we explore every single possibility? Yep, we should. Instead of seizing on one viewpoint, the truth is uncovered by analyzing things from every angle. Perhaps, but where do we go from here? Let's review this series of unfortunate events from the beginning. Maybe we'll uncover something new. <laughs> what a pain in the ass! I don't disagree, but our lives are on the line. If this is what it takes, we have to do it. Plus, maybe we'll get to find out where the heck Kyoko was when everything went down. Yeah, I don't think we're going to. Just saying. Alright then, let's take another look back at what happened. I suppose we could start with this morning. Four of us gathered together in the dining hall. Makoto, Hina, Kyoko, and myself. We waited there for quite a while, but nobody else showed up, so we went to look for everyone. That was around 8 a.m. And as soon as we split up, Kyoko went missing. Soon after that, Hina found Celeste in the rec room, and quickly came to get Makoto and me. It seems I was unconscious for about an hour after I was attacked by my mystery assailant. 
I know it was an hour, because I remember being attacked a little after seven. That was when he saw Celeste's picture and discovered that her assailant had been wearing a strange costume. As it turns out, it was Robo-Justice. It also soon became clear that this same Robo-Justice had abducted Hifumi. We were soon joined in our search by Byakuya and Toko, and then went on to find Hifumi in the library. He was injured, so we took him to the nurse's office and resumed our search for the suspect. But not long after leaving the nurse's office... What's wrong? I saw a shadow! Something moving around at the top of the stairs! When Celeste told us that, we decided to split up and search the second floor. And soon after that... I saw someone moving around on the third floor, and I yelled out to everyone as soon as I did. She sure did. Celeste, what's wrong? That was a rather intense scream for someone like you. I saw him, the strange costumed man. He ran off as soon as I screamed. I was blocking the stairs, so he headed further down into the hallway and disappeared. And then... Yeah, Hifumi scream. Huh? What was that? That came from downstairs. It must have been... Hifumi, he's in the nurse's office. This is bad. Come on, we have to go back. At that point, we decided to divide up into two groups. Celeste, Hina, and I went back to the nurse's office. While Sakura, Yakuya, and Toko chased after the suspect. When we got back to the nurse's office, we found Hifumi, dead. And that's when we heard the body discovery announcement. I left Celeste and Hina there and headed back to the third floor, to let the others know what had happened. Meanwhile, we had just discovered Taka's body in the equipment room. We must have found both bodies at almost exactly the same time. Because we heard the same announcement not long after we discovered his body. And that's when I told you guys about Kifumi. Then the three of us headed for the nurse's office. But right after we left the physics lab, he ran into Celeste, who'd arrived after us. And she told us something very surprising. Hifumi's body has disappeared. We rushed back to the nurse's office and saw that she was right. Then we remembered we'd left Toko passed out in the equipment room, so we hurried back again. This can't be happening. Are we hallucinating all this or something? But when we got there, we discovered that now Taka's body had also gone missing. Next thing we knew, we were searching the school for two missing dead bodies. And after some time... Celeste informed us that she found the bodies, and we all headed to the repository. Which is where we rediscovered the corpses. I think that about covers it. I see. The whole thing sounds exceptionally complicated. Yeah. It certainly seems to me that these are not a simple series of connected events. Okay, well... If that's true, then what? Rather than a single series of events, I think we have to consider each murder a separate situation. And from there, we can uncover the contradictions surrounding all of them. Yeah, that's a good way to do it. Now then, let's get started, beginning with what happened to Taka. The contradictions hidden in what happened to Taka. In order to uncover the truth of this case, I have to find them no matter what. So, regarding Taka's death, I wonder if he died before Hifumi. 
Or perhaps it was after? We already know what order they were killed in. Papa came last. What makes you say that? Because of the numbering of the Justice Hammers! It's true that Hifumi was killed with Justice Hammer 3, while Taka's death came from a swing of Justice Hammer 4. See? So it's obvious Taka came back. The Justice Hammers were numbered, but were they really used in that order? Okay. So, regarding Taka's death, I wonder if he died before Hifumi. Or perhaps it was after? We already know what order they were chosen! Taka came last! What makes you say that? Because of the numbering of the Justice Hammers! It's true ah, that God damn it. with Justice Hammer 3. While Taka's death came from a swing of Justice Hammer 4. See? So it's obvious Taka came after! So, regarding Taka's death, I wonder Oops. if he died before he finished. Oh, wrong button. Before Sorry, I'm dumb. Was after? We already know what order they were killed in. Taka came last. What makes you say that? Because of the numbering of the Justice Hammers. Damn it! Uh. He he was killed out. Oh, what order they were killed in. Taka came last. What makes you say that? Because of the numbering of the Justice Hammers! There we go! Hold on. There's no reason to assume that the Hammers were used in the same order as their numbers. If anything, that's just another way the killer tried to disguise their actions. So you're saying the culprit wanted us to think the Hammers were used in order... But in reality, Taka was killed before Hifumi? Okay then, let's see the proof. Evidence that proves Taka was killed before Hifumi. The watch. There's something that relates to what time he must have died. Oh goody, Hangman's Gambit. Okay, I need the eye. Where is the eye? Oh my god, there it is. Okay, now I need the S. Get a W. No! I tried to click the W! God damn! Okay, now I need an A. Where's the A? Uh, there it is. Okay, now I need the C. There we go. Now I understand. I've got it. Papa's wristwatch. See? Look. It broke with the hands pointing just past six o'clock. It must have gotten broken when he was attacked by the killer. Because as of last night. Yeah, it was still working. Blah blah blah, it's almost 10 o'clock, and it was still working so then. if it wasn't broken after 6 last night, then he must have been attacked around 6 this morning. And that would be his official time of death. But if that's true, then he was killed well before Hifumi. And before Celeste was attacked this morning, which happened around 7. That's right. Taka was killed before any of the other incidents took place. That simple fact slipped past all of us. We made the wrong assumption about the order of events, all because of those justice hammers. That's exactly why the culprit wrote the numbers on each hammer and had them increase in size. That way, when we saw how they were used in each incident, we easily make that wrong assumption. Yep. Now, if Taka was killed around 6, then everyone's alibis for his murder go out the window. Yep, they do. Because when he was killed, 
We hadn't met up in the dining hall yet. That may be true in the case of Taka's murder, but all of our alibis still hold true for Hifumi's death. That's right. With him, at least, we're all safe. When we heard Hifumi screaming, we were all together. Except for Hiro and Kyoko. Then we all ran down to the nurse's office. And that's where we found his body. That's totally true! We're all in the clear! Oh, I know! They must have recorded him screaming on a tape or something, then played it later on! If that's true, where's the tape? Yeah, Hero, you're not exactly the brightest crayon in the box, but it's okay. I don't know. <laughs> I can't. Don't making stuff up. Anyway, we all have rock solid alibis for when we heard Hifumi scream. Since all of us were there together, clearly none of us could have killed him. And it does not stop there. There was also the moment when we discovered his body had disappeared. When his body vanished from the nurse's office, Tina and I were in the bathroom together, while everyone else was in the equipment room, correct? And then, there's the disappearance of Taka's body from the equipment room. At that time, we were all gathered together in the nurse's office because of Hifumi going missing. Well, don't forget, I was passed out in the equipment room the whole time! Wait, then what if Genocide Jill did it? She could have dragged Taka's body out of there right then! Even if she could pull that off, there's no way she could have done the same with Hifumi's body. Because, as we just established, she was passed out in the equipment room when his body disappeared. Yep. Besides, they didn't do either of them anyway. In other words, it is impossible that any of us could have killed Hifumi or moved either of their bodies. On the other hand, Hiro and Kyoko had disappeared, so they most certainly could have done those things. Hmm... So what now, Kyoko? For now, we can't get fixated on who did it, or we'll just keep going around in circles. So instead of who, I propose we start talking about how. In particular, I think we need to figure out how Hifumi's body got moved. Yeah, because that's still a big giant mystery to everyone. That's true. We searched everywhere, but we couldn't figure out how to explain his body disappearing. And according to what Celeste said, we cannot have been gone for more than a minute or two, though. So then, the killer was able to get in and move Hifumi's body in that short amount of time? It would seem so. His body apparently disappeared in the one minute her and Hina took their eyes off of it. But to carry that much weight from the first floor up to the third in that short amount of time? Oh man, yeah! There's no way! It'd be impossible! Well, what if I told you there was a way to make the impossible possible? Yep, there's one way! Have you all figured it out yet? Well, have you? Have you? Let's see if you have. What? How? If the dead body were to move itself. Whoop! There it is! The, the dead body moved, moved on its own? <laughs> oh, Hero, you're adorable. I don't think it has anything to do with the occult. I think what she's implying is, we thought Hifumi was dead, but perhaps in reality he was still alive. He was... alive? Are you saying Hifumi wasn't carried out of the nurse's office, but simply walked out on his own? But I mean, we found his body. He was dead. Perhaps he was simply playing dead. Yeah. But it isn't possible. It's possible, Celeste. Deal with it. The idea that Ifumi was still alive. Is it really possible? If you think about where he was, it was possible. Are you saying that when we first found Hifumi in the nurse's office, 
there's a chance he is actually still alive. No, it is impossible. Kikumi was dead, without a doubt. And you know that how? Yes, Celeste. Yeah, you heard the body discovery announcement along with the rest of us. Kikumi's dead body had been found. Oh, oops. Your meaningless words tire me. Please stop wasting my time. Damn it! Are you saying that when we first found there's a chance you- No. Kikumi was dead. And you know that children who heard the body discovery of Kikumi's dead body and that- Are we real? Maybe the announcement was intended to signal someone else's discovery. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I got it. Are you saying that when we first found Hifumi, there's a chance he was actually- No. It is impossible. Hifumi was dead. And you know that shortly he heard the body discovery announcement, along with the rest of Hifumi's dead body had been found. There we go! Gotcha! Okay. Was the body discovery announcement that was made really intended for Hifumi? Nope. Of course it was. The announcement played right after we discovered his body. Maybe. But that was also the same time that Taka's body was found. That's right. It wasn't long after finding his body that we heard the announcement. So there's a good chance we've made a mistake in there somewhere. I think we've confused whether the announcement was for Hifumi or Taka. First of all, if two bodies had been found, there really should have been two announcements. Maybe Monokuma simply got lazy and rolled them together into one. What do you say, Monokuma? Any comment? Well, it's a very sensitive issue, so I can't go into too much detail. But what I can say about the body discovery announcement is that... It's only broadcast when three or more people find a dead body for the first time. That didn't answer our question, man. We're asking if you're a lazy bum. <laughs> no, actually, that was plenty. Yeah, because if you remember, the announcement was played twice. Think about that. Think about that. Huh? He said it's only broadcast when a body is discovered for the first time. Which means, even if we find the same body again later, he won't make the announcement again. If that's true, then why was the announcement made again later on? Exactly. Huh? Later on? Exactly. We heard the body discovery announcement twice. The second body discovery announcement. The first time it played was when we found each body in the nurse's office and the equipment room. And the second time was when... When they were both rediscovered. We heard it a second time in the repository when we rediscovered the two bodies. seem weird at the time, but it contradicts what Monokuma just told us, doesn't it? Exactly. If we were actually rediscovering both bodies, the announcement shouldn't have played. And in reality, when the two dead bodies were rediscovered, one of them was actually being discovered for the first time. Yep. So, when we found Hifumi the first time in the nurse's office, he wasn't actually dead yet. Meaning, he wasn't actually found dead until we came upon him in the repository. And that's just part of it. There's one other thing that leads me to believe he was still alive in the nurse's office. Yeah, the glasses. Does she? I doubt it. Not quite, genocide. Not quite. That is the worst logic I have ever heard. But honestly... I do not think there's anything that can prove he was still alive. Okay then, let's take another look at the events surrounding the discovery of his body. Then it should become clear whether he was really alive or not. This whole thing is pointless. There has to be proof that shows that Fumi was still alive. I have to find it and show it to everyone.
Well, here's one thing we do know. The first time we found Hikumi's body was in the nurse's office. And then, while me and Celeste were in the bathroom, his body disappeared. And the next time we saw his body, it was in the repository. But when you compare his body before being moved and his body after being moved, other than the change in how it was positioned, there was no notable difference. Yeah, there was. Bam! No, that's wrong. In fact, there was one clear difference between Hukumi and the nurse's office in the repository. His glasses. That fact alone proves that he was only playing dead in the beginning. Sorry if this episode's going on longer than usual. I'll either split it into two parts if it's too long, or I'll just keep it one long episode. So if you see like a weird uh, break in between this episode and the next one, it's because I split it into two parts. Or if you see this episode fading out at any time, then yeah, just, just letting you guys know, but I'm not really finding any good spot to like stop it at, and plus this is one of my favorite chapters, so it's kind of hard to stop here or anywhere at this point. So let's just see how long this goes on, and then yeah. Perhaps you'd like to fill the rest of us in? When we found Hifumi in the nurse's office, his glasses were covered with blood. But when we found him again later in the repository, they were spotless. Yep. And I found the item he used to wipe them clean in the nurse's office trash can. I got it! It was a glasses cleaning cloth featuring a certain cartoon mascot. Oops, I forgot to read that last one, didn't I? Oh well, whatever. One look at the blood stain on the cloth should make things clear. This piece of cloth was used to wipe Hifumi's glasses clean. Yeah, and like, unless you're Hifumi, why would you wipe his glasses? What would be the point? And the mascot on the cloth is the same one that's on the digital camera, right? And whose digital camera was it? Hifumi's, of course. The character was Princess Piggles. The human angel pretty pudgy princess, I think. I highly doubt anyone but Hifumi would have brought something like this to school. Yeah. I see your point. And the only people here who wear glasses are. I wouldn't be caught dead using a tacky piece of garbage like that. <laughs> it's true. He really wouldn't, so I I, I do believe him. A few changes is all I need to keep my glasses clean. Then there's no question. It belongs to his food. So what you're saying is what exactly? What I'm saying is Wow Hero. The blood on his glasses was wiped away using his own glasses cleaning cloth. Even if that is true, he does not mean to wipe the blood off himself. Like I said, why would anyone else do it? What would be the point? But who would benefit from a clean pair of glasses other than the glasses owner? Exactly, unless you need to borrow those glasses, Celeste. Which I doubt. That's a good point. Then it must have been him, right? So let's assume that Hifumi was still alive in the nurse's office. He pretends to be dead. Then when he's alone, he wipes his glasses clean so he can see. Then he stands up and walks out on his own two feet. And with that, the impossible task of moving his copious corpse becomes possible, wouldn't you say? But then, if he was just pretending to be dead, what was with all that blood? Was it strange or something? The fridge in the nurse's office contains packs of blood for emergencies. He probably used one of those. He figured if he was gonna play dead, he should go all out. So he just dumped it everywhere! <laughs> wow. Just wow. But he got crazy with it and had to wipe his glasses off when he was done. Oh, what an idiot! 
and if Hifumi was still alive at that point, the disappearance of Taka's body is easily explained. It should be perfectly obvious who must have moved Taka's corpse. The one who moved Taka's body was... It could only have been Hifumi. While we were all gathered in the nurse's office, he went to the equipment room and took Taka's body. That also explains how the door to the repository got locked. The door was locked? Well, after the bodies disappeared, we all went looking for them, right? Then me and Sakura headed for the repository. But when we got there, the door was locked. And the repository door can only be locked from the inside. Which means, when Hina and Sakura got to the repository, someone was already inside. And it could only have been Hifumi, who just finished stashing Taka's body there. He convinced us all he was dead, and when he saw his chance, he dragged Taka's body to the repository. So, Hifumi wasn't just another victim in this case. He was one of the assailants. But that means he took part in the murders. I just can't believe it. If you're having trouble, would you like me to show you one more piece of evidence? Oh, absolutely. The single biggest fact pointing to his involvement has yet to be revealed. You know what I'm talking about, right Makoto? The item he took off of Taka's lifeless body? Yep. The thing that Ifumi stole from Taka, could it be... talking about the note Hifumi had hidden away, aren't you? Hidden note? That's right. We found it stuffed in his pants. What? In his... <laughs> I love how Genocide just jumped in and said, PANTS! Mm. Yes, his pants. Okay, Sakura, you're starting to creep me out a little, the way you said that. Okay, well, forget about the pants for now. <laughs> Take a look at what the note says. I found a hole maybe we can use to escape. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the equipment room at 6 a.m. That's the note I was telling you about. The one that told me where to go. Huh? Wait, this one's a little different. In my note it said, Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the rec room at 1 a.m. I see. Then this note isn't the same one Hero got. It's not the same? In other words, the killer got in touch with another person besides Hero. And that person could only have been... <laughs> and Fumi's pants! I'm sorry, that's funny. I got it! That's right! Taka! The killer used this note to dry out Taka and murder him. I wonder what would happen if he selected Fumi's pants. <laughs> I'm curious, but now we can't go back, so. Hello! Over here! Objection! Objection! I don't really understand what's going on, but Fumi had that letter, right? So whoever wrote it wasn't drawing out TikTok, they were drawing out Happy! TikTok, good lord. Um, just to be clear, TikTok is Taka and Happy is Fumi, right? Oh, yes! Why must you ruin it every time? Man, Genocide Jack sure is, is seriously scary, but still, I can't let her get to me. Remember what the note said. What time did it say to me? 6 a.m., I believe. The time doesn't matter! The note has nothing to do with TikTok! But it does! Yeah. No! There absolutely is a connection! What? What the hell are you talking about? 
The note said to meet at 6 a.m., which is the same time Taka was murdered. We've already proven that using his wristwatch. But there's more. Look where the note says to meet. The equipment room, right? Which is where Taka was killed. I see. So, Taka was murdered at both the time and place written in the note. I think that should be plenty to show that this note was definitely meant for Taka. Hmm, well, when you put it like that... No further objections! <laughs> then someone used that note to trick Taka. Just the same as me. <sighs> the culprit really is a cold-blooded monster. Telling people they found a way out. But if they gave the note to Taka, what was Hifumi doing with it? Shoved down his pants, no less! Most likely. Hifumi stole it off Taka's corpse after he died. Huh? He stole it? Where's your proof? Go ahead, show us. Proof that Hifumi stole the note from Taka is that little scrap of paper. Wait, okay, there we go. I got it! When I searched Taka's body, I saw that his lifeless hand was gripping a small scrap of paper. If I'm right about this, the sheet of paper this piece came from is... I knew it! It fits perfectly with the note we found hidden on Hifumi! Then Taka's scrap and Hifumi's note... Yup, they're from the same piece of paper. Hifumi had the note meant for Taka, while Taka's corpse still grasped a small piece of that note. There's only one way to explain it. Taka died clutching the note. Hifumi tried to free the note from its death grip. Leaving behind only one small scrap. Did I get all that right? That means Hifumi knew the note was important. Exactly. Which proves that he was an accomplice in the murder. Whoa! Yeah. After seeing all this, Hifumi was super involved in this whole thing for sure! In fact, he was behind the whole thing! In fact, he's still alive! Okay, Hero, you're really starting to get on my nerves just a little bit. Just a little bit. You can't be that dumb, seriously. Sorry, no. When we found him in the repository, Kifumi was truly and completely dead. The second body discovery announcement proves that. So then... Who killed Hifumi? <laughs> yeah, about that. Whoever did is the mastermind. The true killer. He was killed in the repository. So he must have been killed not long after transporting Taka's body. So, he must have been killed after Taka's body vanished. But before we found both bodies in the repository. During that time, we'd all split up and were searching for Taka's missing body. In other words, during that time, none of us have alibi. Wait! But me and Sakura were together! Stop trying to steal the spotlight, you stupid walrus! Wow. Just, wow. Who are you calling a walrus? Anyway, when they were killed bothers me, too. But there's something that's been bothering me even more! And what might that be? The weapon they used to kill Hifumi! The weapon? Yeah, because I mean, according to the Monokuma file, the way Taka and Hifumi were killed was almost the same, with them having similar fractures and all. But Justice Hammer 3 and 4 were still laying around in the nurse's office and equipment room, right? So if Hifumi was killed in the repository, the culprit would have had to grab one of the hammers, kill Hifumi, then put the hammer back where they found it. But wouldn't that be seriously risky for him? I'm surprised. It seems there's some semblance of a brain knocking around that skull of yours after all. Wow, Togami, that's that's quite the compliment you have there. Hell yeah, it's packed in there good and tight. <laughs> He's right though. I don't understand it either. 
mean, if you consider what's in the repository, you do. Just saying. The Monokuma file makes it clear that they were killed using similar instruments. But if the hammers were already laying around those other rooms... So the question is, how could the culprit have gotten their hands on either of the hammers? Personally, I haven't a clue. So which hammer was used to attack Celeste? Number one or number two? Those were accounted for in other rooms too. And I don't think either one is big enough to kill someone. Unless you like, wham the person with it more than once, then possibly. But no, that's not the case here. Um, then... Is it not possible they used a different weapon? I don't think it is possible. They were both killed with the same kind of thing, right? So then, what was used to kill Hifumi? The weapon that was actually used to kill Hifumi. The whole picture surrounding this case won't become clear until we figure that out. Somehow, I have to find the truth. What was used to kill Hifumi? Was it Justice Hammer 3? Maybe Justice Hammer 4? Well, whatever it was, there's one thing we have to figure out. How is the culprit able to move around so freely with the weapon? How did nobody witness them carrying it? Wow, that's hilarious. That pretty clear. The murder weapon had to be one of the justice hammers. But it's not. No, that's wrong. The murder weapon wasn't a justice hammer at all. No, it was something completely different. But seriously, a different weapon? Specifically, a hammer from the repository. The killer could have easily used that to kill Hifumi. Now, all the hammers in the repository were covered in flecks of brick and debris. But for some reason, one of them had been scrubbed clean. Huh? And the reason it had been scrubbed clean was most likely because it was used to commit murder. If the hammer got covered in Hifumi's blood, of course they'd have to clean it off. I'd also like to point out that the repository has all kinds of hammers. Big ones, small ones, and even some flat mallet-like ones. I think whoever made the justice hammers used those as a basis for their design. If that's true, that would explain the Monokuma file's note about the wounds being similar. So Hifumi moved Taka's body to the repository, where someone then used a hammer to kill him. Whoever did that was the true killer. The one Hifumi was working with. And the one who betrayed him. Hold on a moment. I still think it's strange to assume someone was working together with him. The way the graduation rule works, there is no benefit to helping someone else carry out a murder. So the idea that anyone would work together like that is simply ludicrous. We talked about this, did we not? We did talk about how there wouldn't be any reason for anyone to work together. At least, that's what we thought at first, but... that have been laid out for us, even if more than one person is complicit in the murder, only the one who actually carried out the act can graduate and survive. Assuming the rule holds true, it is simply impossible that two people work together on this. That is how the rule was explained to us. But that only really applies if there's one murder, right? In this case, however, there were two murders. Based on the rules that have been laid out for us, 
Even if more than one person is only the one who actually can, assuming the rule holds true, did you think that is? But that only really applies if there's one murder, right? In this case, however, there were two murders. Okay. Based on the rules that have been laid out for us, even if more than one person is complicit in the murder, only the one who actually carried out the act can graduate and survive. Assuming the rule holds true. Bam! No, it's wrong! Since there were two murders, it's at least plausible that more than one person was involved. What do you mean? If there'd only been one murder, then yes, the idea of an accomplice isn't really worth considering. Naturally, if only one person can be saved per murder, an accomplice has no risk versus reward benefit. Risk versus reward benefit? The payoff for working together. The reward that balances out the risk of taking part in a scheme. There's no point in being someone's accomplice if there's no benefit to you. However, if there were some potential mutual reward for the risk, then cooperation becomes possible. You're saying that two people could act as each other's accomplices to commit two separate murders? I think that's what the true killer told Hifumi. They would each have an accomplice for their crime. And based on the case's events, Hifumi would have been the first one to act, murdering Taka. They made him carry out the first murder so he couldn't back out of helping them later on. So in this case, there wasn't one single person committing multiple murders. Instead, each person killed someone, creating two separate incidents. And it only looked like one person because that's how the true killer designed it to look. A single suspicious individual, a similar weapon used in each crime, disappearing bodies. By creating one seamless set of circumstances, they made it look like one person was behind it all. The mastermind picked their target and managed to convince him to go along with their plan. And then to avoid the no accomplices rule, they simply killed their accomplice. Which, if true, means that betraying Hifumi was part of the plan from the very beginning. But that's just... Awful! How could anyone be so cruel? You think so? I can't help but admire its cunning. Still, their choice of accomplice seems... odd. The effort made to convince us the two murders were the same. That was the main characteristic this time. Kyoko must have noticed that fact from the very beginning. Which is why she said not to look at this as a series of connected events, but entirely separate incidents. Kyoko really is amazing, although, when you think about it, she's almost too amazing. Like, it's almost unnatural how good she is at this. I understand how an accomplice could be involved, but then who was the one pulling the Fumi's strings? That's problem numero uno right now! The true killer manipulated Hifumi to carry out a number of actions, and in the end, murdered him. In the debates up till now, the way the case has unfolded, when you consider all that, there's really only one person who seems to fit. And, I hate to end this here, but I'm going to end this here. And I guess leave this on a little cliffhanger for next time. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and if this was split into two parts, then yeah, you had the first episode, or first part of episode 18, and then this one. But if I decided to put this all in one episode, then yeah. But yeah, I explained that earlier, regardless. Anyways, but thank you all for watching, and I can't wait till we finish the trial, and finish this chapter, and yeah, I hope you all take care.